This is Mafia from 2002. This is Sabotor from 2009. And this is Dark Years from 2015. This is what three years of development and government support looks like. They couldn't even get the title of their game right. Black Years? This shows up right after you start the game. And this is what you'll hear when it loads. Where am I? Oh, I feel dizzy. Bastards! Oh, they have tied my hands so hard! This is the type of voice acting you will be hearing for the rest of the game. The next thing you'll notice is the horrible optimization. It's so bad, the game is lagging in the official trailer. Not only the graphics are 10 years behind, but the game struggles to run on a decent PC 8 years after the release. Anyways, this is a story-focused, open-world action-adventure game that falls short in every regard, including the game part. You take on the role of an Iranian journalist in London, where your objective is to meet a friend and obtain some evidence. Unfortunately, your friend isn't home, so you'll try to break into his house. You'll have to backtrack all the way to the boatyard where you started and solve an Among Us puzzle. This gives you a rope and a hook that you'll use to open the door and enter the house. And this is where you notice how hard it is to navigate in this game. The camera glitches out all the time and the controls are awful. After climbing the stairs, you'll find your friend dead. Oh my god, who did this? Who is this poor guy? Doesn't matter, all the information you need is inside his safe hidden behind the picture. Fortunately, your journal has already foreseen the future, as the safe combination can be found in the first page. You unlock the safe, get the info, and now the police show up. This game takes place in 1953, however, this car wasn't made until 77. So much for a game based on historical events, it's a lazy asset dump, who cares, you have 2 minutes to escape the house before the police come in. Fail and you'll get arrested and the story takes a different turn, but we want the good ending, so we go downstairs, pick up a spoon and a newspaper, and use them to get a key and unlock the door. Does that make sense? I don't know, these are stated in the game's manual, and yes, it comes with a manual. This game was so confusing, the developers had to make a full walkthrough and make every puzzle pointless as a result. That's like, the main part of the game. Nevertheless, you use this window to escape without being spotted by the police. It seems like the story splits into multiple paths. That's a positive we rarely see in modern games. We got arrested anyways? What was the point then? The game offers you two completely different actions and yet they both result in the same outcome. This was only the first level. We then switch to the other main character in Tehran. Detective Afshar speaking. Oh detective, I'm glad you picked up the phone. A famous journalist has been assassinated and you're tasked with investigating the crime scene. You pick up your gear and prepare to go outside. But look, a wild dog is barking. The detective is really scared of dogs and refuses to open the door. So you go back to pick up a can opener, conveniently find some canned dog food right outside of your neighbor's house and use it to feed the dog. That was the first puzzle in solving a murder case. But we can finally go outside. This game has lots of loadings and crashes. Regardless, you can now get in your car and explore the open world. Just like in GTA, the cars have a top speed of around 40 kilometers an hour to make the world feel bigger. Because this is the entire map. You then arrive at the crime scene, get briefed by your partner and interrogate a witness. This is where you can really see how bad the dialogues and camera angles are. You know, today man is an evening daily. And this becomes a common theme for every conversation. You get a key from her and enter the dead journalist's office, where you have to solve a maze to get a ball? Yeah, the puzzles in this game don't make any sense. You then have to investigate the body, and for that, you need to distract the doctor? Did the game just forget that we are playing as a detective investigating a crime scene? And it gets worse. To distract the doctor, you have to find a bullet on the ground and show it to him. The shell seems to belong to a 1.5 caliber pistol. That caliber doesn't exist at all. Also, isn't this something a detective should know instead of a doctor? This is a story focused game based on real events, and so far, nothing makes sense. The doctor goes away after receiving the bullet and you pick up a key from the dead body. You use the key to unlock a drawer and then use the ball to open it? Get used to this nonsense. Inside the drawer, you find some documents that make no sense if you don't already know the backstory. You then move out of the building, drive back home, and argue with your crazy wife, who has no connection to the story. They just randomly added a useless and forgettable character to create unnecessary drama. You then go to sleep and switch characters to the now arrested journalist in London. 
You take a nail out of the bench in prison and use it to unlock the cell. The guard doesn't seem to care. You wait for him to leave and then escape from the emptiest police station in history. You then steal a car and drive to a hotel to meet another friend. You can't enter, so you go into the bar beside it, steal soup and give it to a homeless man to borrow his crowbar. Just return it soon. Okay, I'll bring it back soon. You then steal toilet paper and throw a cockroach on the barman's desk. Oh, what's this cop doing here? Hey kid, come and get it. With the waiter distracted, you move down the hallway he was watching and enter the basement leading to the hotel. You use the crowbar to open the door, never returning it to the homeless man, and then use wet toilet paper on the power box to take down the electricity. We're supposed to be the good guy, by the way. You then dress up as a waiter, sneak into the hotel, and reach the end of the level. After doing all of that again, you meet up with your friend, who tells you to get a fake passport from a forger and escape the country. But before that, the game switches to the detective, who is now at the police station reviewing his notes that look much better than the rest of the game. It really tries to immerse you into the experience of investigating a mystery. But then you go back into the game and face reality, where all you do is aimlessly run around horribly designed levels hoping for a prompt to pop up. And then you'll give up and end up reading the manual anyways because the game and the story are so disconnected. You enter the police station's mortuary, nice doors, sign the dead journalist's autopsy result to give it to his family, and right as you go outside, this happens. You're under arrest. Thank God I got to that poor girl in time. This must be the worst car chase in video game history. That didn't even look like a hit. Just why? You then drive to the dead journalist house and enter the first area in the game that doesn't look like a complete asset dump. You then meet the dead journalist's wife. She wants you to find a murderer and make him pay for his crimes and then immediately refuses to answer your questions about the case. I'm not feeling well at all. Please come later. Who wrote these characters and dialogues? You might think this is because the game is translated to English, but the original Persian voiceovers are only slightly better, mainly carried by the famous voice actors they hired. Anyways, you go to the journalist's room where you are presented with another puzzle. And they got it wrong. This is not how the solar system looks like. And yet, it unlocks the globe and reveals a note. It hints towards the journalist's father. And to find his address, you have to go back to the police station's archives, which is the least optimized room in the game. You then go outside and for the first time, witness the terrible traffic AI. The most fun thing to do in this game is running over NPCs while driving to mission objectives. You then enter this laundry, nice stairs, and meet the journalist's father. But first, you have to fix his stem pipe, stem pipe. using a bolt and a handkerchief. You pick up the bolt all the way back from the journalist's house and the handkerchief can be found in the police station. Yeah, you were just supposed to know that before coming here. The father still refuses to answer your questions, so to gain his favor, you have to go back to the police station and take his son's ring from the body. Couldn't we have also done that before coming here? No, you have to go back for this one. Level design. You ask the doctor for the victim's personal belongings. He says go ahead, but then the game wants you to distract him before picking it up. Why? You have to ask the caretaker to bring the doctor some tea, but as it turns out, he's been stuck in the pantry for an hour. Couldn't you scream? He makes tea after being freed and you can finally pick up the ring. So far, the most complicated puzzles in solving a murder case have been feeding a dog and distracting your colleague twice for no reason. You bring the ring to the journalist's father and get the documents you need. Upon leaving, you get ambushed and almost get beaten to death. This is where we switch to our journalist friend in London. A full recreation from real life. And they forgot to change the map. But eventually, you arrive at the forger's house. You picked the wrong house! The forger can make you a fake passport. So you pick up a beard, buy some clothes without paying for them, and get your photo taken. That's some quality cutscene. 100 minutes of motion capture by the way. You process the photo, shrink it using game logic, and finally fly back to Iran. We then switch back to the detective in the hospital. What? Zabipur's missing? Oh my god. Your best friend and partner is missing, and in response, your wife acts like a complete bitch. Having to live alone, anxiously, 
forever. You now get out of the hospital and get ambushed again? You're a detective though, you have a gun, remember? This game is supposed to have action and here it comes! This is it. The only real action segment of this game is a heavily scripted scene where you just point and click. Actually, that's what this game should have been. The studio behind this game has been making point and click games since 2006. This game could have been mediocre, but instead, they made it 3D and slapped in some GTA elements that don't fit the style of the game whatsoever. Anyways, you go back to the police station, meet the chief, and learn some history. He gives you a gun, not that you'll ever use it again, and tells you to go to the archives, where you'll learn more history. The game really wants you to know that it is based on real events now. You then go to your partner's office and find his journal. While you are recovering in the hospital, your partner finds out that one of the people who ambushed you is a police major. That sounds like corruption. Your partner talks to the major and they agree to meet up in a secret place without telling anyone. This is obviously a trap. I'm sure our partner isn't dumb enough to fall for that, right? Right? Okay, the detective is smart though. So he also decides to follow the address without telling anyone. It's late night though. You drive back home to sleep only to discover your wife has left you. Oh no! Anyways, the game now switches to the journalist, who has now arrived in Iran and is at the same address. The front gate is closed, so you go around and swim inside. But there's another guard. Fortunately, the journalist is much smarter and more capable than the detective. <coughs> you then enter the house and find some documents revealing the murderer is hiding in the British Embassy. So you teleport there, make up some lies to gain entry, and just happen to overhear a scheme to overthrow the government. In the meantime, the detective finally arrives at the address, where he finds his dumb partner buried, and eventually ends up in the same fate. This is where the game turns into these comic book style cutscenes and both our protagonists meet. Somehow, the journalist teleports back to the detective and helps him recover. He gives him information about the murderer and the times he leaves the embassy. The detective uses this opportunity to arrest him. The murderer reveals that he also killed the detective's wife. Good riddance. It looks like we're having a good ending after all. But suddenly, a car comes from behind and knocks out the detective. Without also hitting the murderer? And the journalist somehow gets arrested now? What the hell just happened? We were just about to arrest the murderer, solve a case, and uncover a conspiracy. And now suddenly we're being burned alive? This game, this story, just doesn't make sense. There's no gameplay, no level design, difficulty all coming from buggy controls, graphics from 2005, poor FPS, lots of bugs, game being unbeatable without a manual, and a terrible story trying to be unnecessarily political. The only good things about it are the art and the music, most of which aren't even licensed. Safe to say Dark Years qualifies as one of the worst games in history, so what really went wrong? To answer that, we need to take a look at RSK Studios, the creators behind this mess. They've been making simple point-and-click adventure games since 2006, all of which were mediocre at best. With Dark Years, they took on a bigger project in a game genre they had no experience in, and it shows in the results. They also released two Ace Combat ripoffs that are just as bad. It's near unplayable with horrible controls, camera, levels, and AI. Their other games on Steam are just re-releases of their older titles and they stopped making games in 2016. But how can you make such failures for 10 years without going bankrupt? With government money, of course. The Iranian government really liked the political team in these games, so they gave RSK Studios more money and 5 years to develop a AAA game? This really happened. Their game came out in 2021 and it was... interesting. Maybe I'll go over it in another video, as it wasn't released outside of Iran. But apparently, they released another game in 2018, called Iran 57. It was so bad that it's not up for sale anymore, and this is coming from a website that called Dark Years a remarkable game. Fortunately, there's a surviving version, and even though it features better controls and actual combat, it also features more propaganda. This is not a politics channel though, and I had to cut this section out. Just know that RSK Studios takes down user comments underneath their game reviews. These games were relatively obscure, but we can go deeper. I scrolled all the way down the Steam's racing category and bought 50 games from there. What could possibly go wrong? 